Ciao a tutti! Hi everybody! This is Marcello from Vizio Italy. As we try and get a sense uh, out of this uh, tragic times we are living in, and uh, most of it we try and, and see a light at the end of, of this tunnel, um, many comparisons are, are being made between uh, what's happening now and what happened in the last two years of World War II, when a civil war broke out in Italy. Uh, even our President of the Republic, uh, Sergio Mattarella, referred to it uh, in, uh, in one of uh, his uh, uh, latest speeches. Um, in my opinion, uh, I think that that was, uh, in Italy, our darkest hour. Uh, the time when everything seemed uh, irremediably lost. Uh, still, we came out of it. And that was the time when our country started back from rubble, to become the nation it is today. So I have decided to tell you a story, a long story. The story of Italy's fall and rise. A story of death, betrayal, despair, hunger, but also a story of hope, of renewal, of faith, and hard work. Because at the end of this story, Italy was born again. So this is the story of Italy from 1943 to 1946. There will be students, soldiers, spies, scholars, politicians, uh, traders, partisans, diplomats, but mainly honest people who managed to find their own way through a tragedy which seemed at that time endless. I hope you enjoy it. So let's get back to 1943. Uh, the Allied, uh, the US and uh, Great Britain are facing a coalition, the so-called coalition of three countries, Germany, Italy and Japan. But whereas Japan is fighting its own war in the Pacific, uh, in Europe he, here, Italy and Germany are fighting together. So we are at a turning point in the war in Europe. So the Allied had just conquered North Africa after two years of combat. And now, what will be their next move? In January 1943, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the president of the USA, and uh, Winston Churchill, the prime minister of uh, Great Britain, meet in Casablanca in Morocco uh, for a war conference, and they take two decisions. First, they solemnly swear that the war will be over only with unconditional surrender of Italy and Germany. And second, they decide to attack Italy the weakest member of the coalition, uh, starting from Sicily because uh, the road to Berlin passes through Italy and goes north. So the invasion of Sicily would be carried out by two armies, the British Eighth Army of Marshal Montgomery, the winner of the battles of North Africa, who would land in Pacino here, and the American Seventh Army under the command of George Patton. Uh, Patton is the volcanic general who likes foul language and loves to show off his belt with the two western type pistols with ivory handles. Uh, I hope you have seen the movie Patton back in the 70s with a stunning performance uh, by George C. Scott. It's a wonderful movie about the character and about uh, uh, the, the landing in Sicily. Uh, go get it, you'll enjoy it. Um, so the Americans would land in Jela. The plan is to, to get to climb up north to Messina with the Americans covering the side of the British advance on the left. The plan does not take into account the key point of the operation, the possession of from the beginning of the Strait of Messina here, its gate to the continent. Uh, the project lacks uh, imagination and, and audacity. Um, these qualities are completely absent in Montgomery's strategy uh, and Montgomery's mind. And uh, there's another problem. Uh, it humiliates Patton. He, uh, the Patton is virtually ousted from the seizures. The conquest of Messina has been assigned to the British soldiers. And uh, it's uh, up to him only to cover the march of the British on the left. There's also a personal rivalry between Patton and Montgomery. The, the English looks down on the American. 
because he wanted the army. Well, Patton's army did not end very well in the battles in Africa. So the preparation of the invasion starts right after the conference in Casablanca, and so uh, do uh, covered operations. And the most famous one is uh, Operation Mincemeat. Uh, April 30th, 1943, uh, a body is found off the coast of Spain. It is an officer of the British Combined Operations Headquarters, Major William Martin, who has drowned and has a bag full of confidential documents on him. So Spanish officials uh, pass the documents on to German intelligence. They show that the enemy is faking a landing in Sicily while the rear target is Greece. So the German high command takes these documents very seriously because they confirm Hitler's predictions and it's better not to contradict the Führer. The result is that seven German divisions are transferred to Greece, one to Corsica and one to Sardinia. It's a fake. Operation Minsmith was designed and put into action by the British Secret Service who literally invented Major Martin. They created a false identity, they picked the body of an unknown dead soldier, they dressed him uh, as a major, they boarded him on a submarine and stranded him off the coast of Spain with the fake top secret documents. One of the most successful secret operations uh, in the history of World War II. July 10th. The British Aid Army lands on the coast uh, between uh, Capo Passero and Capo Muro and uh, the American 7th Army in the Gulf of Gela. As the Germans fight fiercely, the Italians flee. Many soldiers abandon their posts and throw their weapons away. Some even begin to dress in civilian clothes. It's a real dissolution. The confirmation that the Italian army is no longer willing to fight for the war of Mussolini. So, while the British find strong resistance in Catania, the Americans manage to break through and uh, they point to Palermo. The advance of Palermo doesn't make sense. You have to cut out uh, the troops on the western side of, uh, of the island, not go toward them. But, uh, General Patton wants to be the first commander to enter a large European city, to take it away from Hitler. So he already dreams of the big headlines and his photos as a victorious commander in a historic location, uh, while the rival does not advance beyond Catania. So on July 22nd, the Americans enter Palermo. Patton is portrayed as a conqueror in a devastated city and receives uh, numerous delegations uh, of citizens uh, at the royal palace, just like a king. He is an idol for his troops, and the echo of his deeds makes him the hero in the eyes of the American citizens at home. The Americans from Palermo head to Messina, but uh, the advance is very slow. Patton is eager to get to Messina before the British and pushes his soldiers uh, regardless of their needs and their tiredness until August 3rd. He is visiting a field hospital crowded with uh, wounded people and he spots a soldier who does not appear to be injured. Uh, so he asks him uh, why he's there and the soldier uh, uh, answers, uh, I think I cannot do it anymore. Patton loses his temper insults him and slaps him with his glove, then grabs him by the collar and pushes him out of the tent with a kick in the butt. Commander-in-Chief Eisenhower learns about it and orders Patton to apologize. Everything is silenced until November when the scandal breaks out and Patton will be laid to rest before being recalled for the Normandy landings. In retrospect, uh, the mistakes uh, uh, made by Patton uh, are very, very grave. 
Um, in the following days, uh, the Germans and Italians are very busy slowing down the Allies to allow their troops to embark on the continent. And they do it quite well with uh, very few losses. Almost all German troops and Italian troops uh, cross the strait uh, successfully. Well, who's the winner of the race to Messina? The Americans. Uh, on August 17th at 8 a.m., uh, the Italian uh, commander of the Messina contingent offers uh, General Truscott the surrender of the city. But Truscott is in grave embarrassment because he knows that Patton wants to be the first to enter the city, to appear as the real winner of the last Sicilian battle. So the general arrives at about 10 a.m. in a very elegant uniform. He takes place on a jeep and wanders through the devastating Messina. And in the central square of the city, he has a platform placed from where he makes a speech for American soldiers who are dirty and hot under the August sun of Sicily. So the campaign is over after 38 days. But now it's clear that the days of fascism are almost over. And in the next episodes, I will tell you about uh, the fall of Mussolini and his escape. In the meantime, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao, ciao.